What's up guys, Jordan from Precondo here. I was not gonna make another video this week, but a condo just sold in Milton for a million dollars. So I think it's worth making a video. Let's get into it. So here's the building here. It's a seven year old condo building in Milton. Whereabouts in Milton are we? Doesn't really matter. Milton's just a giant suburb with nothing to do. So actually it's on Maine, uh, Maine and Bronte. So it's near the strip with the restaurants. That's nice. Anyways, it's seven years old, carpeted bedrooms, just your average run of the mill condo, nothing special about it. Here's the unit here, uh, unit 315. So unit on the third floor, it's obviously large, 12, over 1200 square feet, almost 1300 square feet, sold for $1,051,000. I feel shocked. Here's the unit here. It's nice, your average condo unit, your average seven year old condo unit, right? So popcorn ceilings, carpet in the bedrooms, nothing special, nothing overly unique. Sold for $1,051,000, was asking $799. That sold for $250K over ask. Putting it at $817 a square foot in Milton in a seven-year-old building. What's fun about this one is there's a direct comp that happened just in December, so less than two months ago. And that one, same size, maybe 50 square feet less, sold for $860,000. So you're talking about the condo market in Milton and this particular large unit moving, you know, $190,000 in less than two months. And that's what happens. That is what happens when there is nothing listed for sale. A lot of people said condos were dead. Of course, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I never for a second believed that. Um, because condos are the first rung on the property ladder. They are the most affordable segment. They are where most people start out. When you look at the detached entry price in Milton and you look at the solds in the last 30 days, we've got probably a teardown. Here's a nice bungalow on a 50 foot lot. This will be less than 1500 square feet, somewhere probably around 1200, 1300. Nicely renovated though. It's a beautiful, beautiful home. Uh, sold for 1.475. Let's find one of those cookie cutter builder homes. Here you go. 1.5, got 1.6 here. That's a nice large one though. 1.5 on an older build there. 1.25 on a very small bungalow here. So anyways, your entry price more or less for a detached in Milton is somewhere around the 1.5 mark, right? So naturally people are gonna start looking at townhomes and then if they can't afford townhomes, because obviously at $1.5 million purchase price, as a first time home buyer without a ton of equity in a previous property, you're gonna need considerable household. You're gonna need like 300,000 uh, a year in household income just to support that mortgage or 250,000. You know, this is 817 a foot, 1.05 million. You can buy um, in Etobicoke direct from the builder for a building that's about to close uh, a brand new unit at um, Dun uh, Dundas and Kipling, uh, that is walking distance in this building here. Here, let me move it over. This building here. Walking distance to uh, Kipling GO station, Kipling TTC station in Etobicoke. This particular pocket at Etobicoke is very expensive for freehold, detached. Uh, you know, you're looking high ones or, or low $2 million range. Um, right on transit in Etobicoke. And you can buy this unit here, 1022 square feet, two bed and den for $920,000 right, right from the builder for a brand new unit. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? A cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Oh, okay. I smell money. Do we really think that in 10 years, that condo in Milton is going to be worth more than this one you know, that's a few transit stops away from the financial hub of the country. Um, I don't believe so, right? And that's why I think now is the time to bet on condos in the core because it's really the only place in, in Southern Ontario that I that I see value in, in terms of, in terms of market dislocation, like every other, every other neighborhood and city has has appreciated so rapidly that that downtown is, is where the value's at or, or areas like Etobicoke and Scarborough, um, or North York, for example, right? And that's not to say that Etobicoke and Toronto and Scarborough condos haven't appreciated yet because they have, and they're, they're, <laughs> they we're seeing some pretty serious price acceleration um, in the first quarter of this year already. Uh, so for example, here's one unit that just sold at Islington Terrace. If you're not familiar, Islington Terrace is, instead of being on Kipling Station, it's over here on Islington Station, as the name would suggest. 
it's these three buildings right here, subway station here. So it's just um, walking distance to Islington subway station, great area. And uh, this unit here just sold for 629,000, was asking 550. And this is the floor plan here. So it's a one bed with parking, 475 square feet, sold for 628,000. So it sold for over 1,300 a square foot. Uh, what's interesting about that to me and what's exciting about that to me is that I actually just uh, sold a bunch of units at this building here, the so Westerly 1, Westerly 2. So you can see it's right next door to each other, right at Islington Station. Um, luckily, my clients uh, were able to get into that building for far cheaper than 1300 a foot. So we actually just in December, um, or uh, was it December or was it November? I think it was November. But in November, we sold a bunch of units there to our clients. And they got, uh, so here, here's one example of this unit, the 1A at Westerly 2 launched 478 square feet launched at 522,000. So 100k cheaper, but you have to add parking. So you add 60k for parking and, and um, $40,000 cheaper than new resale comps. So in just a few months, our clients are already in the money on those pre construction purchase, which which is a, you know, super rare for pre construction, because generally, you're paying so much more than resale value. But in this case, you know, they've done incredibly well. And if you've watched uh, my video from yesterday, you probably already saw this. But right now, the price of a condo downtown is trading at 65% of the price of a Whitby uh, detached, you can see here, whereas the long term average is 97%, meaning that a condo in the downtown core historically going back to 1996, usually trades at exactly or very close to exactly the same price of, as a Whitby detached. And same thing kind of happened in the detached market. I know I pick on Whitby a lot, but this the graph looks the same for Hamilton or Barry or Bradford or these other areas as well. Guelph, Waterloo, you get the idea. Um, if you look over the long term, 1996 going forward, you know, back in 96, the price of a Toronto detached was about 1.5 X the price of a Whitby detached. And if you go back just a few years, it was roughly, you know, a Toronto detached was roughly 1.8 or 1.9 times the price of a Whitby detached, which makes sense. Um, some people might look at that as a market dislocation, but I just look at that as sort of natural progression of a, of a city like Toronto, where there is no more room for urban sprawl. And so you're the the detached home stock is limited the population continues to increase the people who want detached homes in the city continues to increase but there is no room to build new supply of detached properties and so the only thing being built in toronto is condos therefore you have more scarcity of detached properties in toronto so naturally if you look over time um, detached properties closer to the core are going to out appreciate areas where there's still lots of land to be able to provide that detached supply um, right now, so like I said, at our peak, where a detached property was roughly double the price of a Whitby detached. Um, and now a Toronto detached is only trading at 1.4 times a Whitby detached. And this just goes to show that we've got some serious market dislocations here that are ripe for correction. Now, I know some smart, some smart guy is going to post in the comments and say, downtown's dead, Toronto's dead, it's never coming back. Work from home is here to stay forever. I'm never going back to the office. Yeah, whatever. You probably said you were never going to fly again after 9-11 or whatever. Um, life will return mostly to normal at some point. Um, and if you're not betting on that, well, the data shows shows you different uh, different numbers. So obviously we know the condo market, the resale condo market in the downtown core is doing incredibly well, but so is the rental market. You know, if you look in 2020, we saw condos uh, shave 20% in rent. So rents were 20% lower than they were. We've almost recovered all of that. Now, uh, even with the influx in Airbnb listings coming to the long-term rental market, tons of people moving out of the city, and so those long-term rentals coming back to market, all of that inventory is now gone for the most part, and we've seen rental price growth for condos in Toronto at almost at 18% this year, uh, December over over last year's December. And that's a trend that I expect to continue, not at those crazy numbers, but I expect rent will continue to push up this year as people continue to move back to the city. This I'll leave you guys with that and I will see you guys next week.